What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was a very interesting one. So on Tuesday, we saw the release of iOS 14.7 Beta 4, and then on Thursday, we saw a surprise release of the iOS 15 Public Beta. So Apple originally said that it was coming in July, but they decided to release it on the final day of June, and I don't think anybody is complaining about that. And also right before that public beta released, we did see a re-release of iOS 15 developer beta 2. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about all the latest software in this video. We're going to talk about some additional new features and changes, the performance, the battery life, and when to expect the next iOS 15 beta, along with the final release of iOS 14.7 for those of you who decided to stay on iOS 14. And then we do also have more information on a few upcoming Apple products that we'll talk about at the end of this video. But anyways, let's start off this follow-up video like we do every single weekend with some additional new features and changes found here in iOS 15. And the first one is a very interesting one. And this is one that I am not going to be showing. It's going to be a screenshot from a Reddit user, but you can see in iOS 15, the activation lock now shows up instantly after booting up after a restore instead of you know going through the setup process and then finding out that it is iCloud locked. So this is a very interesting setup. I like it a lot better. And you can see that it also says that the location can be seen by the owner, which is a great kind of scare tactic from Apple as well. And you know this could even result in some future stolen iPhones being returned to the owner because somebody who stole that may see that it says it's being located and they can see the location and they may panic and just return it. So I really like this new activation lock screen here in iOS 15. And speaking of locations, live tracking is now available inside of the Find My application here in beta two. So if you are tracking somebody or if you just share your location with somebody, you will now be able to see them in real time moving. So before in iOS 14 and previous versions, you would only be able to see, it would refresh like every 30 seconds, every minute to two minutes, you know, some interval like that. But now in iOS 15, it's going to be live. It's going to follow that person every step they take. It's not going to have to refresh every 30 seconds to a minute. So that is now live in beta two, which is nice. Of course, both you know parties do need to be on iOS 15 for that to work. And before we go any further, I did also just want to mention that developer beta two was re-released on Thursday. So when the public beta came out, just about like 15 minutes before, there was a re-release for developer beta two. And as far as I know, nothing at all has changed in this except for the build number. And it's kind of just to put it more in line with the public beta. So now they're gonna be you know, kind of on the same level and Apple's going to be able to push out updates for these two easier. I'm not sure the exact science behind it, but I do know that really nothing has changed in the re-release of developer beta two. So if you're wondering about that, there's really you know nothing to wonder about because there's really nothing changed except for the build number. Now, one of my favorite features overall in iOS 15 is visual lookup. So this is going to give you the ability to you know identify plants, identify dogs, cats, things like that by simply taking a picture of them and then swiping up. But for whatever reason, that stopped working on my 12 Pro Max here in beta two. So I'm gonna have to show you guys this on my iPhone 12 Pro right here, my daily device. And I noticed in beta two that the visual lookup feature works when you take a screenshot of a song and swipe up, you just tap on the icon that you see on the picture right there. It's a little white icon. And once you tap on that, you will see that it actually takes you, it suggests Apple Music to you and you could play the song right there or you can go to it in Apple Music by simply tapping on it right there. It will take you to the album it's on. So that is pretty cool. This really works for everything. It's really awesome. I really love the visual lookup feature, especially when trying to identify plants and dogs. I found it works actually pretty well for being in a beta. And speaking of the photos application, we also have a few changes inside of the edit screen here. So when we go to edit a photo and we go ahead and tap on the crop, button right here, which by the way, you'll see at the bottom, those icons are changed in iOS 15. This is iOS 14 over on the left, iOS 15 on the right. So you can see some slight changes to the little glyph icons down there and at the bottom. But if we go to this right here to change the dimensions of this, you'll notice a, a few changes down here. So first off, you can see that the text is slightly different here in iOS 15. And also the eight by 10 size is now replaced with four by five. So it used to be eight by 10 in iOS 14, but now it's four by five 
and iOS 15. And then also inside of markup, if you go to the plus right here and then go to description, there's a slightly different animation right here. It kind of zooms in on the photo like that and you can type in your description. And also in beta one, the description would kind of go away. It would disappear after you went out of this, but now it retains in there. It keeps the text that you typed in there. So it just wasn't working in beta one, but it seems like the descriptions are working now in beta two. Now we also got two new splash screens in beta two. So one is inside of podcasts. When you go to the library section, you will see this new one right here. So it talks about shows, latest episodes, and saved. We also got a new splash screen for voice memos in beta two. So it talks about your recordings everywhere, playback speed, and improved sharing. Now, one thing I also noticed inside of voice memos, and this is probably just because I don't use voice memos at all, you know, anymore. But one thing I noticed is that the edit button right here is new. And we also have skip silence now inside of the voice memos application. So just like some popular podcast applications, you can now skip the silence on your voice memos, which is pretty neat. And by the way, just for comparison, this is iOS 14 on the left, iOS 15 on the right. You can see a pretty big difference when you press on the share or edit button right there. So you can see much better looking here on iOS 15 with some additional new features here, the playback speed, the skip silence and enhanced recording right there. Also the new maps animation, as you just see right there is now available on pre A12 devices. So before the animation, when you put in a route inside of the maps application only worked on A12 bionic devices and newer, which is the iPhone 10R, 10S and newer, but now this animation shows up on pre a12 devices now also inside of the safari video player if we go ahead and pull this up right here let's go ahead and put this in full screen we have a slight change here inside of this player right here as well so if we tap on these three dots right here and go to playback speed you will see that the order has changed around now so now it's from fastest to slowest whereas before it was from slowest to fastest so just a minor change there in the playback speed of the default video player in safari also in ios 15 we have a nice change to the apple tv remote so you can go right here from the control center and you can see quite a few changes here we do have the volume controls now in ios 15 beta 2. we also have the power button over there on the right we have this little menu in the middle right there up the top middle then also down at the bottom you can see some changes as well just a lot of ui changes it is a little bit dark so i apologize for that but i just never covered the apple tv remote here in any of my videos on ios 15 but you can see quite the change there from ios 14. and then also one thing i noticed on ios 15 beta 2 specifically is that cell connectivity has improved from beta 1. so beta 1 was very spotty especially when going from 5g to lte i would have like an extended period of time where i just had no signal for like at least two minutes and beta 2 has mitigated that i have not had that issue once since having beta 2 on my main device my 12 pro here so that is good news cell connectivity definitely improved in beta 2. now as far as bugs go there are still some remaining bugs here on the public beta of ios 15. so it's going to be public beta 2 and developer beta 2. so apple is on the same page now with the numbering system so no longer is the developer beta one step ahead so like in the past it would be developer beta 3 would be public beta 2 and it made it kind of confusing so now apple is jumping straight to you know just keeping them the same number so public beta 2 developer beta 2. so anyways on the public beta and developer beta 2 we do still have some remaining bugs so some of the main ones i've noticed are application sounds are still not working properly so for example snapchat and espn are my two ones that have been happening frequently and i have to reboot to fix it but the app specific notification sounds are just not there so i just get the default notification sound instead of the snapchat sound that you're used to hearing when you get a notification so that is still not fixed in beta 2. also the volume rises and it's just kind of off when going in and out of different applications that are playing audios. Like for example, if I'm playing a YouTube video and I go out of it and go into Twitter and then I go back into YouTube, the volume will be you know much lower than what it was before. And if I press the volume once to go up, it you know makes it go really high. So just some really weird things going on with the volume when going in and out of applications. Also inside of Safari, I have noticed some bugs. Safari is a lot better here in beta two than it was and at beta one but i noticed that when trying to close out a multiple tabs at once or just you know rapidly that sometimes safari will just completely crash and i've also noticed that sometimes when i try to add a new tab group or add tabs into a tab group safari will just crash so still some issues going on with safari but it is being worked out also private relay that is also something popular that 
you know, happens a lot in Safari. I've noticed that I have it turned completely off on my 12 Pro, but for whatever reason, it still shows that it's turning on. I have it completely turned off everywhere. I have the feature turned off and cellular for Safari, everything. But somehow just today, it just randomly turned on on its own and started working. So not sure what's going on with iCloud Relay, but that seems to be still having issues in beta 2 as well. And then also a lot of people have been reporting issues with VPNs still. So VPNs appear to still be having issues here on beta 2. And then just a minor thing I noticed, just a really small visual change that I noticed right here. If I go ahead and take a screenshot here, you can see the pause button down here. If I tap and hold on that, you can see, let me go ahead and see if I could do this. So I got a screenshot of it earlier. So here it is. I couldn't, you know, re recreate it there, but this is what I saw earlier when I haptic pressed on the pause or the resume button. So maybe if I go ahead and press pause, let's see if I pause it and then haptic press on resume right here. Let's see if I can pull it up. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So that's what it was. So you can see up top, it shows foobar. So that's definitely not supposed to be there. Just a very minor visual bug that I noticed but that is one bug here in beta two inside of the photos application. And then also I have had some people report that their banking applications still do not work here in iOS 15. So if you still you know, are wondering if you should install iOS 15, I would make sure that your banking app works on iOS 15 before doing that. You can maybe Google around, look it up on Reddit, something like that. But there are still people reporting that their banking apps do not work on iOS 15. And then also Wi-Fi connectivity is still very wonky here on iOS 15. I've noticed, especially with FaceTime calls, that when I start a FaceTime call, whether it's video or audio, my Wi-Fi just turns off and it goes straight to LTE or 5G instead of using Wi-Fi, whereas it did not do that in iOS 14. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And then also I do just have random disconnects throughout the day and it's not my router because it's not happening on my iPad or on any other device that I've been using you know, for the same amount of time throughout the day. Now, as far as performance goes, performance is definitely better here in beta two than it was in beta one. And since my last follow-up video, I really don't have too much to talk about besides the fact that, you know, apps are still crashing more on beta two than they were on beta one, which really doesn't make much sense, but that's still going on for me. Also, I've not had the control center or the app switcher lag at all here in beta two, whereas that was one of my biggest issues in beta one. So thankfully that has not come back and I don't imagine that it will be coming back at all. Also, I do have the occasional, you know, stutter and hiccup, but it still feels, you know, much better than it did on beta one. You know, I'm saying these good things about it, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a beta. And if you're not used to running betas, especially on your main device, you may not be entirely satisfied because not everything is going to work as you know, you plan on it working. Things are going to go wrong. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the performance here on beta 2. I think it's a, a step forward even from iOS 14. iOS 13 and 14, you know, we're good. But I think that iOS 15, as, as far as beta 2 goes, is more stable than it has been in the past couple of years, which is a good sign. Now, as far as the battery life goes, battery life has been pretty bad still on beta 2. So battery life is still not there yet. If I go to my battery right here on my main device, I still have to charge it throughout the day. You can see when it's doing those really quick charges, that's just on my wireless charging mat in my Tesla. So, you know, don't mind that. But the battery life is still just not great. I mean, you can see my charts here. Of course, this doesn't really tell the full story, but the battery life is not very impressive at all here on beta 2 no matter what device i'm using it on even on my 12 pro max the battery life is just not there it's just not great definitely going to get better battery life on any version of ios 14 including 14.7 you know the betas or even when we go to 14.8 those betas will be you know better battery life than ios 15. it's probably going to take a point release of ios 15 to really get that battery back on track so now let's quickly go over the community poll so if you guys go to my channel and go to the community tab right here you will notice that i do put up these polls every single week asking you guys for your input on the latest release so for me i would vote this as good just a few minor bugs and you can see there the results from 19,000 people so first off thank you to everybody who voted you can see we got 16 percent on excellent 18 percent on good six percent on not so good and 60 percent were waiting on the public beta so i'm assuming that's going to be people waiting on the public beta and then also those who just are not going to be on ios 15 at all but if we look at the comments here 
you can see, let's go ahead and read through some of the most annoying bugs. I asked you guys, what's the most annoying bug you're still facing in beta two? And you can see some of the responses here lag when switching dark mode or light mode, it lags certain apps being unusable in Safari and Wi-Fi being slow to load anything. So yeah, that's probably related to the private relay feature I was talking about earlier. Some apps won't open that is expected on any beta release volume issues in some applications. So yes, I'm definitely having volume issues. I agree with Brad right there. I've been having that update payment information. So that's probably because you need to update your payment information. I've not seen or heard of that one unless you actually need to update your information. Keyboard doesn't pop up when I swipe down to search. So that actually happens on iPad OS for me. I've not had that happen on iOS yet, but that is definitely a bug here in iOS 15. This content is not authorized on Apple Music. I have had that and also, you know, related to country. I've had that as well, even though I am in the right country and the content is authorized. So that's pretty interesting. Volume issues on certain apps. So, yep, definitely agree there. Constant crashes on the iPhone SE 2. Pretty interesting. Photo recognition is missing when you press information. So Carl seems to be having the same issue I'm having on my 12 Pro Max here where I do not have that feature, but it has been there in beta one. So let's go back and read some of your guys' original comments here. Someone says here, when I open a Reddit link in Safari and open the Reddit app, it causes a respring. So sometimes it happens with Twitter as well. So that's pretty interesting. And somebody in here also says that it happens with Twitter. So apparently, you know, at least 11 people agree with that and are having that issue. I have not personally had that, but that does appear to be an issue here in beta two iOS 15 beta two has fixed a majority of the bugs that were making me mad. I want the public beta so I can switch from developer beta to public beta. Good idea there. Safari was flawless in beta one after the update it crashes whenever I close multiple tabs. So I did mention that as well. That's definitely something I've been facing personally. When you double tap the home button and swipe to close an app quickly, the phone shuts off and will not turn on again until it receives power. So that sounds like an issue with your iPhone eight plus. I'm not sure I've not heard of that, but someone also said it happened to them. So please watch your language in these comments, guys. But uh, anyway, so much better battery life. You can see Smart Tech here said much better battery life and a lot more stable too. I have some minor bugs in Safari, like switching between tabs and Twitter is still crashing. But other than that, it's working perfectly on his iPhone 7. And also, by the way, guys, I do just want to say if you're reporting these bugs here to me on Twitter, you can report them in the feedback application as well. So look for this purple icon or just search for feedback and please report all these bugs inside of the feedback application so Apple can get to fixing them. Just mentioning them in my comments is not going to do anything. You know, Apple may look at these, but they may not. But, you know, it's not going to be solved from a comment, most likely. So just please report these bugs inside of the feedback application. That's what it's there for. You are technically, you know, installing the software and using the software with an agreement that you will report bugs. You are a beta tester. So please do that with that application. But anyways, let me just read off a couple more comments here and then we'll move on. Smooth, good battery life, but overheats on the 7 Plus. Finnish Army says that the flashlight in the control center will randomly not work. And then also when connected to Bluetooth, a notification rings and lowers the volume of the music or video that you're playing. And then after that, it will not raise the volume until another notification rings or you reset the connection. So that's an issue I've been talking about as well with the volume. And then he also says that wireless charging was an issue in beta one, but was fixed after upgrading to beta two. Sometimes Apple maps will crash for no apparent reason, but a bit rare. So some good insight there on some bugs happening in beta two. But again, thank you to everybody who voted and especially thank you to everybody who commented on this poll. Be on the lookout next week for a new one when we talk about beta three and public beta three. So I guess it's going to be beta three for both of them. But anyways, Let's talk about what's next for Apple. So if we go into our calendar right here, you can see that next week starts off with a holiday. So we have the 4th of July here in the United States, and then it is observed as you can see right there on Monday. So I doubt that Apple would release anything on a Monday, but we are on a two week cycle. So that means that as early as the 6th, and I would expect it to be on the 6th, is when we should see iOS 15 developer beta three. So we are on a two week cycle, and that means that with the public beta, if you are on the public beta, you will probably see public beta three the following week. So the week of the 12th. So in the early stages, Apple usually waits about a week to release the public beta after the developer beta, then it starts getting closer. And then eventually it's going to be on the same day, the developer beta. And then, you know, hours later will be the public beta. That's usually how Apple does it. So I would expect developer beta three of iOS 15 next week. And then the following week, 
public beta three. So there is also the chance that Apple doesn't wait a full two weeks for the public beta. We could also see a public beta three later in the week. Next week, you know, maybe on the eighth or the ninth, Apple has been very unpredictable lately and really anything is possible. But that's just based on history, what I would expect Apple to do. Now, as far as iOS 14.7, a lot of people have been asking me about that as well. So iOS 14.7, we're currently on beta four. We did just get beta four this past week and we have been on a two week cycle, but I would expect that to go back to a one week cycle now or actually start on a one week cycle now as we get close to the final release. So we're on beta four and we really haven't had too many changes. So I would expect either a beta five or an RC more likely next week. So if we get the RC, then that means that the final will probably come on the week of the 12th. And then after that, we'll probably start getting iOS 14.8 betas. So I would expect iOS 14.7 to be released to the public within two weeks. Most likely the week of the 12th is when we will see iOS 14.7. But of course it could come earlier or in a rare case later as well. But that's the latest as far as what to expect with the next Apple software releases. Now, aside from the software side of things, we also had some Apple news come out over the past week that I wanted to briefly run through. So first off, we got a new report from Nikkei Asia that says Apple will be debuting their next generation three nanometer chip in the 2022 iPad Pro. So they say, quote, Apple and Intel are testing their chip designs with TSMC's three nanometer production technology. Then they go on to say Apple's iPad will likely be the first devices powered by the processors made using three nanometer technology. The next generation of iPhones, which are to roll out next year, are expected to make use of the intermediate four nanometer technology for scheduling reasons. So according to TSMC, this three nanometer technology can increase performance by 10 to 15% while reducing power consumption by 25 to 30%. So this should be very interesting to see. And hopefully by then we actually have some form of pro applications for iPad OS to take advantage of such a powerful chipset. And of course this does bode well for the next iPhone as well in terms of the performance. And then we also got a new report from DigiTimes that claims Apple will announce the highly anticipated redesigned 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros in September. So this was kind of expected at this point but now that multiple sources are kind of agreeing on the September timeframe, it does seem that we will have to wait just a little bit longer for that redesigned M1X MacBook Pro. And then as far as anything coming out soon, I wouldn't get your hopes up because Mark Gurman did just recently say that the next couple of months will be relatively dry. So he said not to expect any new products until iPhone day in September. And he did also reiterate the products that we can expect to see around that time of year and then also early next year. And then finally, Ming-Chi Ko reiterated that the AirPods Pro 2 are coming next year as we all suspected. And then he also mentioned that the release of the AirPods Pro 2 will boost shipments to more than 100 million AirPods, which is just an absurd number. And AirPods are definitely a huge hit and I personally think that the AirPods Max are amazing. I don't care what anybody says. I love my AirPods Max, but the AirPods Pro 2 will definitely be very interesting next year and I think they will sell like hotcakes. But anyways guys, there you have it. That is my follow-up review on iOS 15 Beta 2. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and of course make sure you guys subscribe for iOS 15 Beta 3 content coming next week and of course I will have a new follow-up next weekend as well with a lot more information in it. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.